Hi, Justin here. Welcome to part two of my Parisian Walkways lesson. We're going to be checking out the lead guitar part this time. Uh, this is a tribute to the late great Gary Moore, who sadly passed away a couple of days ago. Um, it's really, really important that you go through and you listen to the song a lot to make sure that you get the right character and the right bends and the right kind of phrasing for the notes. I'm going to be showing you what I'm pretty sure is the right fingering with the right notes and show you how to play it. But really to pick up on the, the correct rhythm and everything, you really need to listen to the recording. That's really important. So uh, let's get to a close up and I'll show you what the notes are. Okay, the lead starts with the third finger bending the 15th fret on the second string up one tone. <laughs> releasing it back to the 15th fret regular. 13th fret on the second string still, sliding back to the 12th fret. Then we move over to the third string and we play 14, 12, 10. Then 12th fret on the thinner string, second finger, followed by a tone bend at the 13th fret of the second string. So that whole lick, that first one. The second phrase starts here with another tone bend on the 13th fret of the second string. Back to the release. Now it's a slide up to the 12th fret with the third finger. Flicking off to the 10th fret. Then little finger on the 8th fret of the second string. Now it could be, you know, maybe Gary used this third finger there, I don't know, I'm using my little finger up to you to make a decision about the fingering. And now we've got this really interesting little kind of double bend, which is on the seventh fret of the third string. Uh, followed by this interesting little rake, which I've slowed the track down and the notes are 9, 10, 10. Not really sh exactly sure how he's playing it, I'm guessing it is that. So using your first finger on the ninth fret, second finger muting the other two. And then second finger slides up from the d where it is on the tenth fret up to the thirteenth fret. So that whole of the second phrase is this. phrase. So starting here at the 13th fret, 12th fret on the second string. Now here we've got 8 to 10 and then it's kind of a sudden stop on that. 10 on the third string, 9, 12 on the fourth string. And then just 13th fret on the second string, flicking off to 12th fret. So this third phrase. And the last little phrase for the intro. So this one here is a 10th fret full bend. To the ninth fret, to the tenth fret on the third string, then sliding from the seventh to the ninth, back to the seventh fret, and the fifth fret uh, on the third string is the last note. Pretty straightforward. Now, most of that repeats for the verse, so I'm not going to go through all of that again. Um, then we come to the first solo. The solo starts here with the first finger in the 14th fret of the second string. Moving up to the 15th fret. Third finger on the 17th fret. On to the 18th fret for two full tone bends. To release. So that phrase, the first one.
second phrase. So the second phrase there, 12th fret, 13th fret, tone bend with the 13th fret, then 13th fret on the thinner string. Jump to the 16th fret of the second string to a two tone bends from the 15th. It's really a key thing to get the his vibrato there. I don't think I've got it very good yet, but you know, that's something that you want to work on. And next phrase, we got. Which is here, 14 on the third string, 12th fret of the second string, 13th fret of the second string, two tone bends on the 15th fret, still on the second string. Release. Then we're down to the ninth fret on the second string. A little rake up to that one. On the rake on the fourth and third. 10th fret. 12th fret to the 10th fret and now we're on to the monster fast lick. Well that's the lick, not played particularly well, almost at speed and kind of almost right. I know I've got the notes right so let me run through you exactly what's going on slowly and you and me can both practice it and get it up to speed with the record. So we're starting off here with an 8th fret full bend with the 3rd finger. Then we release it and we're going to play 8, 7. Then we're going to pick the 7th fret again, hammer on the 3rd finger in the 8th fret, flick it off to the 7th and flick it off to the 5th. Then pick the 7th fret again and flick off to the 5th. Then we've got 8th fret on the 2nd string followed by 5th fret on the thinner string, followed by an 8 on the 2nd string, flicking off to the 5th fret. It's kind of the first section, if you like. I'd recommend getting that first part done, and then the second part, and then joining them together. So here it is again, the first part. The second part, we've got here a seventh fret full tone bend with the third finger. Now that note is held twice as long as all of the other notes. That's rhythmically the only way to think of it. it just that one note is a little bit longer than the rest. It's not really a set rhythm that I want to try and count out for you. It's just kind of as fast as possible. And Gary's beautiful phrasing just makes it sound perfect. So um, not good enough to show you that, unfortunately. Anyway, so seventh fret full tone bend. Then fifth fret on the second string and the thinner string, eighth fret flicking off to the fifth fret, eighth fret flicking off to the seventh flicking off to the fifth, then we've got seventh fret again, then we've got this little kind of run of hammer-ons and flick-offs, we've got the fifth fret on the second string, seven five flick off on the third string, seven five flick off on the uh, fourth string, and then seven five flick off on the fifth string, sliding down to a little curl kind of on the third string, and then it's either an A chord or that A note. I can't know. can't decide which one it is. That second part again, real slow. together.
there, the last solo starts here at the 15th fret second string with a tone bend. What you really want to notice here, the way he bends the note up without adding any vibrato and sticks the vibrato on kind of gradually. It sounds really awesome. So it's bending up. And then the vibrato starts. And then it comes down to 15th, 13th fret, 12th, rake up to the 10th. 12, 10. That's a little rake. You just use your third finger to lay on the strings. So. Now we got here 12th sliding to 13th. 10th fret, nice for brother. Then a little kind of hammers on the 12 and it's very short, that first phrase. The second phrase of this end part here, 13th fret, tone bend. Release it, 13. We've got the little slide up to the 12th. Now it could be the bend, but I think this time it's a slide. Eight on the second string. Seventh fret. And then just sliding up to the ninth, back to the seventh and back to the ninth. Using my second finger, but you use whatever finger you like, it really doesn't matter. Followed by a little flick off from the tenth to the eighth fret of the thinner string. Okay, next phrase we got sliding up to the thirteenth fret. Twelfth fret, then slide up to the tenth. Eighth. Then we've got here the tenth fret on the third string. And he's got a little, it's very subtle, you can only just hear it, but he plays the ninth fret. And there's a little second finger just dabs on with a really quick hammer on flick off going down to the twelfth fret of the fourth string. Very, very subtle, but it sounds lovely when you get it. So. Thirteen, twelve. And then we've got ninth fret to tenth fret. Kind of the end of the tune, there's one more lick, which is just a little kind of a fill thing where that little sequence starts repeating at the end. Eight, ten, seven, eight, nine. That's how I love that lick, though. And then he does the same thing but with a different slide at the end. and then just slides up to the 12th and back. And that's the whole solo. Well, I really hope you enjoy playing Parisian walkways and it inspires you to go and check out some more stuff by Gary Moore. He's a really, really incredible and one of the most influential blues rock guitar players. His work with Thin Lizzy was outstanding and his, with the stuff with Skid Row was great as well and his solo albums. Definitely go and check some of it out because you really can't go too wrong. He's got a beautiful, beautiful guitar player, great to work out, a real pioneer in that kind of blues rock genre. So go and check that out and I'll see you for another lesson sometime very soon. Rest in peace, Gary. Hope you're jamming with Jimmy and all the guys up there. Take care. Bye-bye.